What is the best handheld radio, the best HT, handy talkie, handheld transceiver coming into 2022? It's a brand new year. The best HT under $100 for today's ham radio operator, whether you're a new ham, getting back into it, whatever. We're going to talk about it right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. And hopefully, now that we're into a new year, the thing that is new in amateur radio is you. If you're a new ham, then you have landed on the right video. This video is part of the New Ham Workshop. I'll share the link to the description for this playlist below, because I've got a lot of different videos about what radios to buy, what brands to look for, what antennas to buy, that kind of thing. So welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB, and today we're going to talk about the top 10, what I think are the top 10 ra handheld radios coming into 2022 under $100 for the new ham radio operator. Now, these are going to be your lower end HTs. Some of them are Chinese. Some of them are Japanese. These are going to be a good starting point for some people. So if you're get, just getting your feet wet in the hobby, you just got your license or you're about to, and you're wondering what HT to buy, these are my ten, my top 10 choices for the beginning of the year to get you into ham radio, get your feet wet, let you see what it's all about. Let's go. Now, as I've said before in some of these past videos, I go in order of price. I'm going to start out with less, least expensive one and go up to the most expensive one. It doesn't necessarily mean that the most expensive is the best, although oftentimes that is true, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's always true. So we're going to talk about what I think are a, is a great choice of radio for you, starting with the lowest priced one, going up to the highest priced one, up to $100, and I'm going to tell you the features of each one. So check this list out. I think you're going to like this. The first one, of course, is got to be the Baofeng, Baofeng UV5R. This is probably one of the most popular radios in the amateur radio market today. And quite frankly, the reason is not because it's a great radio, but because it's it's just cheap. It's 25 bucks. You can see right here, Amazon has it on sale for 9% off. It shows number one bestseller there at uh, in the dark orange right there above the price. So the, the Baofeng UV5R is a popular model. There's a lot of different renditions of it, different colors, different accessories you can get for it. For 25 bucks, you can get into amateur radio today, get your first dual band radio, get on the repeaters and start making contacts and start seeing what the world of ham radio is all about. I was licensed in 1994 and about the least expensive method, of course I was in college at the time, I didn't have any money. The least expensive method of my getting on the air was a Radio Shack HTX202, which is a really big radio, it's about this tall. It's got an antenna that's just as tall as the radio, so it made the radio twice as tall. It's got a big battery on the bottom of it. It held 16 channels. It went from 144 to 148 megahertz. That's all. Nowhere outside. No receive anything. And it did about 5 watts if you're on external power. And that radio sold for $189. I didn't have my first dual band radio until several years after I got my first ham radio license. So the fact that this radio exists today, I think is a very good stepping stone for those of you wanting to get into ham radio. You don't want to spend a lot of money right now because maybe you won't like it. I think you will like it. I think you're going to find it's a fantastic hobby. But for those that are wanting to kind of be smart and financially um, financially responsible about it, then this is a good stepping stone radio to get you on the air, get you using local repeaters and see what it's all about. I do recommend upgrading from this once you've used it for a few months get something that's a little bit better, get up into that $150 or $200 range radios. It's going to be better for you, better sounding when you're receiving repeater or audio traffic. And you're going to get better audio reports when you're talking to someone else and they come back to you and say, hey, that radio sounds really good over the air. So you might get some of that with this radio, but you're going to get much better results with the more expensive radios. But today we're talking about the best HTs on $100 $25 for this entry-level radio, so you can start here and move up, and it's easy to do. The next one up is the UV82, which is kind of considered the big brother of the UV5R. It's a different form factor. The antenna that comes with the UV5R is kind of junk, so I would suggest buying that radio, throwing the antenna away, and getting a better HT antenna for it. I'm working on a video for my favorite top pick HT antennas, so I'll link that below when I have that ready, but it's not ready yet. 
This one, the UV82, the antenna, the stock antenna that comes with this radio is actually pretty decent. You can do better with an aftermarket antenna, sure. But the stock antenna that comes with this one is pretty good. It's got accessories for it. It's got a little bit better form factor, a little bit better feel to it. I have used this radio at my hunting lease several times because I have... I don't like taking my big three and four hundred dollar radios out there and getting a chance of getting them rained on or losing them or dropping them in the field or getting them damaged somehow. So this is a great alternative for something that's maybe like a throwaway radio, something that you want to be on the air, you want to talk to your buddies in the general area or on local repeaters, but you don't want to take out your expensive radio. This is the one that I personally use right here. This is the five watt model. They have an eight watt model, which is right here. It's about twice as much. So the 8-watt model also comes in different colors. It is UV82 HP, HP for high power. This one will do about 8 watts. The, the regular one without the HP will do about 5 watts, and it's about twice the price. Do you need 8 watts? Maybe. Uh, depends on how far you are, are away from the repeater. Depends on how far you are away from other stations you might want to talk to on Simplex. Make that decision for yourself. Is it worth double the money for an extra 3 watts? Probably not in most cases, but... Back when this UV82 released, uh, they've dropped the price on it quite a bit. This used to be like a $45 or $50 radio, and I would tell people, go ahead and get the $60 radio over a $45 radio for those three extra watts, but twice the price, probably not. But decide what you want. You might want an 8-watt HT, and that's totally fine. But the UV82 is definitely on the list today. It's a good entry-level radio, a little bit better than the UV5R, still on the low end, but it's going to work well for you. The one I've had at my hunting lease, I've had for out there for like three or four years, and it still works strong. No problems with it at all. Next up on the list is this RT85 from Redivis. Now, I did a video review on this HT just a few months ago. Redivis sent me this radio. They emailed me, and they said, we want you to review this RT85 radio of ours. And I said, okay, well, let me look it up, because I didn't know what it, I didn't know exactly what the, what the details of this radio was basically this radio is the same as the tyt uv88 so tyt and redivis are two different chinese companies uh, the uv88 is a 35 dollars radio that you can get on amazon the redivis rt85 is also a 35 dollars radio that you can get on amazon i these days i like redivis a little bit better and let me explain why i don't want to get too much uh on a caveat here but if but a lot of the complaints about amateur radio websites and club websites and stuff is around the lack of or kind of the outdated look of some of these websites redivis has a really good and they still got their christmas sale up at the time of this recording redivis has a really good website it's a good presentation if you email them through the website they do respond so they've got a lot a much better customer service presence than some of these Chinese companies overseas do. So I have, you know, I've traded some emails with them a lot over the past six to 12 months. They're very responsive. And I have had viewers come onto my channel and you say, well, Jason, that's because you have a YouTube channel. They want you to do reviews for them. And that's probably partially true. But I've had viewers comment on my videos saying, yeah, I emailed Redivis through their website and they replied the next day. And they were like, hey, you know, try this, try this, try this, and that kind of thing. So they like to respond to their customers. They do give a little bit better customer service these days than some of the Chinese companies do. So I'm kind of inclined to push Redivis radios a little bit more than TYT radios these days, especially since these two particular models, the RT85 and UV88, are the same radio. The only difference is that they have Redivis or TYT stamped on the front. That's a, basically it. The UV82 and UV5R I spoke about a minute ago, those Baofeng radios, they both hold 128 channels in memory. These two same radios here, the RT85 and UV88, will hold 200 channels in memory. So you already got an upgrade right there, five bucks more, basically. You've got an upgrade to the number of memory channels, almost twice as many. It's got a, a little bit more sleek design, a little bit easier to read screen. The backlight on it's a little bit easier to read, in my opinion. And everything else is pretty much the same. These sound really good over the air. I've gotten some really good audio ports on local repeaters in my area with this radio. In fact, this radio, this RT85 that I reviewed, is the first radio I gave to my nephew, who's 14 years old and recently got his ham license. And he's been on the repeater with that radio, so I've been listening to him from the other side of the conversation. It sounds like a great rig. So for 35 bucks, you really can't go wrong with the RT85 from Redivis. Or if you just want to go with the TYT route, a little bit 
barely different look, but basically the internal guts are the same radio. You can get both of them for about $35 on Amazon. All the links to these radios will be in the description below on one link. I'm going to have everything listed out so you guys go check that out as well. Going up in price, we talked about this one kind of already. This is the UV82HP. It's an 8-watt version of the UV82 radio. It is about $70 on Amazon at the time of this recording. So once again, decide if you want a 5-watt or an 8-watt radio. We're going to talk about a couple more other 8-watt eight eight radios here in just a minute. Decide if you want a 5-watt or an 8-watt. This one also is limited to 128 memory channels, so it doesn't have the number of channels, the uh, the Redivis and TYT radios we just spoke about, but it, it it is supposed to do up to 8 watts, where the all the four radios we talked about previously are only 5 watts. This next one here is a really great, if you're going to spend 60 or $70, I suggest getting this radio, quite frankly. This is not an 8-watt radio, but it is a tri-band radio. This is over at buy2waradios.com. This is the TYT TH350 tri-band. In fact, I've got one of these right here. This is, that, this is my version of the tri-band. I've done a couple of videos about this radio. And the great thing about it is that it has a screen... It's probably too, it's too bright in the camera right now, but it's got three lines. There we go. The backlight went off, so now you can see it. It's got three line display. So you can display the two meter band, the 1.25 meter band, and the 70 centimeter band on the screen all at the same time. Most of these dual band radios have dual display. Some of these tri-band radios also have dual display, and you can only display two of the three bands at the same time. This is unique. I've never seen another radio that'll do this. This, this TH350 from TYT, it was on my list for last year's video. It's on my list for this year's video because I still have this. I bought this. This is an aftermarket antenna because it comes with two antennas, one for dual band and one for 220. This is a tri-band antenna. You can get this antenna for like 10 or 12 bucks on Amazon. But it has tri-display, so three-band display, so you can monitor and listen to a 2-meter repeater, a 220 repeater, and a 440 repeater all at the same time. And you have the added benefit of having the 1.25-meter band. Now, do you need the 1.25-meter band? And my answer is yes, you do, if you have 220 repeaters in your area. So get on the website, go to rfinder.net, uh, download the rfinder app, or get on repeaterbook.com, something like that. Look up the repeaters in your area. See if there are any 220 repeaters out there. And if you have 220 repeaters, I recommend getting a tri-band radio because 220 is an excellent band. The repeaters reach out farther because the noise floor on that band is lower. There's not as much interference. There's not as many people on it either. So you can strike up some really good conversations from further away and have, have some fun with that band a lot. One of my favorite bands to use in ham radio today technician class operators your first ham radio license you guys can use that band all you want to it's totally within your privileges and you're going to have fun if you do it so 70 bucks over at buy2wayradios.com for the tyt th350 it is a great choice today of hts under a hundred dollars moving back to amazon but sticking with the tri-band feature this is a b-tech or a balfang tech uv 5 by 3 now this looks just like a uv5r except they've put the 220 band into it it is a 5 watt radio so you're going to get between 4 and 5 watts on all three bands belfang tech as i've said on previous videos is a company inside of the usa who takes radios from belfang in china and updates them makes improvements to them and sells them through amazon but if you ever have technical support or need to return something for a defective unit or something like that, instead of sending it back to Amazon and, and hassling with them or, and having, or maybe even having to send it back to China, Belfang Tech has offices in the United States that you can pick up a phone and call or send an email to, and they're going to respond to you inside of the USA time zones. So they are a really good company that supports the amateur radio market. If you go to baofengtech.com, you check out their website. They've got a very forward-thinking, great-looking, updated website that they keep on top of as well. So I think they're a really good company. They are a sponsor of the show. I have reviewed several of their radios. I carry this radio. This is my main radio that I carry with me at my hunting lease because we do have 
a 220 repeater near the hunting lease that I can talk on easily from a handheld radio. So I have this radio, I have my UV82 that I mentioned earlier, and a couple of other ones that I leave out there. And this is the one that I always use if I'm talking on 220 because it's got that capability where the others don't. Good tri-band radio, $70 on Amazon, limited to 128 channels. The TYT is also limited to 128 channels. If we go back here and see this page, you've got 128 channels there. So 128 channels in the TYT tri-band, 128 channels in the UV 5x3 tri-band. So not as many channels as the UV88 or the RT85, but it adds the aspect of a third band, which is really fun to use if you have those repeaters in your area. Now we're going to move into some of the Japanese radios. Everything we've talked about so far has been made in China. Baofeng Tech is distributed through the USA and Amazon, but they are made in China radios. Everything else we've talked about today has been made in China. These radios are made by Yezu. These next two radios are made by Yezu, and Yezu is a Japanese company. Now, sometimes you might get one of these, and it might say made in China on the box, and another one you might get might say made in Japan on the box. I spoke to Yezu about this, and they're like, well, it kind of depends on where the last leg of manufacturing was for that batch of radios. I did a review on one of these Yezu radios, and mine says made in China, and people came back and said, hey, I have the exact same radio, and mine says made in Japan. So if that matters to you, then look at the box before you buy it. Go go to gigaparts.com, which is where I recommend here, and check these out. Just ask, send them an email and ask them, say, are these specific models of Yezu made in Japan? But this is the FT4XR. This is a 5-watt dual-band HT for $90. It's got a pretty decent display on it here. Let's see if I can zoom it. There we go. It's got a pretty decent display on it. One drawback about this radio and the next one we're going to talk about is that they're both dual-band but they're single display, so you can only monitor one band at a time. So you can turn it on a 440 repeater or turn it on a 2-meter repeater, but you can't monitor both at the same time. So that's one drawback, but you're going to get much better audio quality reports from these radios. These radios do have a large channel capacity of 200 memory channels, so we're back to the 200 memory channel feature. It's got a 1-watt powerful output audio on the internal speaker of the radio, but it is a 5-watt transmitting HT. Okay, so this is the FT4XR. It is a 5-watt dual band from Yezu, and it's a really good choice for just under the $100 mark, but right around in that part and a much better quality than anything we've talked about so far. It's kind of big brother or twin brother, I should say, because they're both kind of the same radio, is the FT65R, which is also a 5-watt radio. Still single band display, a little bit larger antenna on this radio. I don't know that that really makes a big difference, but again, this is a Yezu radio. This is the one that I reviewed that my box said made in China, but a lot of the comments that you guys came along and made on that video saying, hey, I have the same one. Mine says made in Japan. I'm like, okay, well, good. So that means there, there are multiple ones out there. This radio carries an IP54 rating for dust and water. It has a 1950 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. And it has an optional 2,500 milliamp hour battery that you can purchase after the fact. Most of these Baofeng radios and most of these radios do have optional larger capacity batteries, sometimes battery eliminators to plug into the, the cigarette lighter adapter in your car, something like that. Uh, this one includes that same thing. So the FT65, I've done uh, several... I've carried this with me several places and used it kind of here and there just to kind of get a feel for it. I, it's it's It works really good. I think the audio quality is good. The internal speaker sounds good. I get good audio reports on the local repeaters around here. So right at the same price as its twin brother, the FT4XR. The FT4XR is a little bit shorter, and the FT65 is a little bit taller this way, but uh, but slimmer this way. So it depends on what you what you wanted, you know, just kind of whatever. It, hey, get the one that's in stock. <laughs> if you want one of these, get the one that's in stock because they're both the same price. The FT65 does come with a three-year warranty. It said down here at the bottom of the page, probably on one of these other pages I was looking at earlier, but it comes with a three-year warranty. It's a great product from Yezu and uh, definitely falls in under $100 today. So the last one we're going to talk about today is actually out of stock, but I like to talk about Alinko. Alinko is another Japanese company. This DJ500T, right under $100 at $95 is what I'm trying to say. It is a 5-watt handheld with dual band. It is a, I believe it does have a option for dual display on this radio. Their pictures on this website are not very good. But it's got a large dot matrix 3 color selectable display. Semi-duplex dual band with a VVUU. Yeah, so it's got two, it's got 
the ability to display two bands at the same time on the face. It's got 200 memory channels and a few other options like that. Now, this radio is out of stock at Gigaparts right now. You might be able to find it at a couple other websites that uh, that we've talked about on this channel before. But Elenco is a really good, solid-feeling HT radio. They've been in business for a long time, and they're another Japanese brand, so I would, I would recommend this. If you're looking for something of a higher quality, the Japanese-made is going to be most of the time better than the Chinese-made stuff in the amateur radio market, especially in your sub-$100 price category. The Japanese stuff is going to be better quality than the Chinese stuff, you know, 99 times out of 100. And this Elenco DJ500T, which has been around for a long time, is tried and true. It's got great audio. It's got really good support from Gigaparts, and it'll make a great first radio for a dual-band radio for you. So that is basically my list of 10 radios, 10 HT radios that you can get at the beginning of 2022 that are under $100 for a new ham radio operator, somebody that just got your license, or maybe you're just getting back into radio, or maybe you just need a new radio, and you're like, I don't know what's out there. My radio is really, really old, or I like this really expensive radio I've got, but I need something that's a little bit more knock around, something to take hiking, camping, hunting, whatever. This is a good choice of radios. You can kind of choose anywhere from $25 at the cheapest up to $100 at the most expensive. I'd like to know in the comments section below if you have anything that's a sub $100 radio and I didn't list it here, put a comment below. Let me know what it is. Let me know how you like it, and we'll see you next time.